Welcome back from that Kickstarter. I believe uh, some light has been thrown to some of the issues that I've been grappling with, especially when it comes to the capital city of Kampala and its regulations, as well as those that are making a living within the capital. Now, away from making a living, there's crisis in northern parts of Uganda and other parts of Uganda that has become rampant. Uh, right now, government is treating it as crisis and are turning to it as emergency. According, according to the Integrated Food security phase classification in Karamoja in northeastern Uganda more than 300 people are actually estimated to be experiencing high levels of acute food insecurity at crisis level or even worse you're looking at about 56,600 children across the nine districts also being affected by acute malnutrition and in need of treatment 61 percent of the population in Karamoja right now is living in poverty three times higher than the national poverty level. David Kavanda, director for the Center for Food and Adequate Living Rights, is here to throw more light on the situation in Karamoja, but also speak about food insecurity across the bar in this country. Good morning to you, David. Good morning, Chair. Yeah. Well, I can't say it's a good morning in Karamoja right now. Every single hour, yeah, there's yeah. someone who's experiencing acute hunger, malnutrition, the children been seeing pictures, uh, NTV has been covering those stories in mm. the course of the past seven days and mm. it's a very, very story, sorry state. Now we want to find out from your analysis, why is this the crisis uh, in Karamoja and why is it ravaging right now? What could be the major causes? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it, 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 it is very unfortunate that we are even sitting here to have this discussion. As we speak now, you may find someone is dying. Uh, we were in Kotido, Nepak last week, and we, we saw people being buried because of hunger. Someone has starved. What, what is left on their skin? Many of you have seen these photos. What is left on their skin are bones. <laughs> so, so I think this is why I, I think it is very sad that as a country which has two seasons in a year, very good seasons, very good vegetation and everything. We find ourselves in these discussions, discussing a crisis where they ought to be none, discussing an emergency where they ought to be none. I think as a country, we need to recenter uh, the, the basics. And, and, and coming from uh, the, the, the Center for Food and Adequate Living Rights, we think that we need to bring back the law in its place. If we are talking about this critical component of life, this critical component which we call the fundamental human right to food, then we need to go back to the basics of the law. What does the law require us to do? Who is responsible for what? And who must do what? I think as a country, as a people, we now need to to go into a very honest conversation and then look at ourselves in how we have failed the fellow countrymen. Many people ha are talking about Karamoja, but we know that Karamoja, uh, the, the, it is not happening for the first time. It has happened. The, the other year in 2019 and 20, we know that they were even given food and the food killed them. Yes, I, we, there are even cases in court. Food, when the food was distributed. So I think it is a consistent failure mm -hmm. on the people who must manage and govern situations. And I think it is not only failure, but when leaders refuse, <laughs> I call it refuse, to, to, to do what they ought to do. And this is why. Uganda is a sovereign state. We have a constitution. We have a government. I know we have a cabinet. We have parliament. And we have the judiciary. We have a constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, in this constitution, Uganda must establish what we call national food reserves or a national food reserve system. We don't have it. Since 1995, we have talked, we have cried, we have asked you. It is not actually begging. It is a constitutional mandate. 
It is a legal obligation on and you. And it's not even just in the Ugandan constitution, but also in yes. the integration of the East African communities. It's also one of those key things, <coughs> setting up a strategic food reserve. Yes, yeah. they even call it strategic food reserves under Article 10, uh, 110. If we are members of the East African Community Treaty, if other partner states have strategic food reserves, why, why are we different? Why don't we have strategic food reserves? Then the bigger question would be is that why does government in the presence of the constitutional mandate and the treaty mandate to those, uh, to us as we contribute to the East African community, why does the government continuously treat it mm. as in the name of crisis and emergency or disaster for that matter? Because mm. now you looked at last week a lot, you did have uh, the Prime Minister Robin and Abancha going to the floor of parliament uh, mm. seeking for 135 billion shillings mm. uh, to sort out this issue as an emergency, mm. uh, there's food that has been sent to Karamoja mm. in this regard as mm. relief to mm. aid uh, in giving solution to the crisis right now. And yet you're looking at a situation whereby three months ago you did have the United Nations actually giving a report to the office of the Prime Minister in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, which mm -hmm. clearly indicated that there was going to be a food crisis in mm. Karamoja. Mm. Away from that, this is something that is guided by nature. We all know that every so often mm. in a year, areas like Karamoja are going to be having food crisis. Mm. Uh, uh, for, for leaders who care, I think they even needed to give Ugandans a public apology. Because they all know this information. And see, this is not the first time, but I'm telling you we are sitting in this studio. Give me one month from now, we'll be having stories of 135 billion disappearing somewhere. Maybe a percentage of it didn't even reach to the people. Again, coming back to when people do not respect human rights. No accountability sometimes. There's a lot of impunity. You've asked me a question, why? You know, you have all this information with you, but because nobody is accountable, people are not participating, people are not empowered, there is not, you know, recourse to dignity, looking at people as, you know, as, as the people who deserve dignity, I think we are losing it at that point. And for us, this is why we are asking uh, Office of the Prime Minister and everyone who is concerned that let us go back to recentering a, a, a human rights-based approach to, to, you know, to, to, to this food situation. And I also want to, to, to mention, uh, Shira, that we have local governments Local governments are both the corporates. They can sue or be sued. They have the mandate under the Local Government Act. Why I insist that local governments have also failed their people? You live near with the people. Tell us, what are you doing when it comes to food security? If you are in a park, Cotido, yes, we know that the climate conditions there are very harsh. But you plan because people have been able to feed themselves ever since that region was created by God. And we cannot be failing at now. Now, turning Kayamoja into a begging region that every time they must be putting up their hands to beg, give us, give us, we are taking away from a food rights angle because food must actually be culturally appropriate and people must be able to eat from their you know customs and cultures we know these people are pastoralists it is also food we get food from animals from birds you know what what, what happened to their animals uh, how can they ca can we see like a, 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 a continuous trade if you trade what you don't have and you get what you have and you get what you don't have so we need to go back to the drawing board but I also wanted to bring in an aspect of, yes, we are talking about Kayamoja, but I want to speak to all of you Ugandans. Yesterday I was in Changkwanzi, and you can clearly see a lot of malnutrition when it comes to specifically to children. Many Ugandans are silently starving. People don't have food.
And this is what you must When you know. say people don't have food, please be clear because mm. uh, the president continues to pride in the surplus of food in this country. Uh, maybe we have so much surplus that we end up having a lot of exports in terms of food. Our neighbors in Kenya are taking our maize mm. ever so often. Mm. In mm. South Sudan, we continue to have mm. food export. And yet you are saying that mm. people don't have food and they're starving. I, you see this equation, come, many people are poor. That is a fact. Then, if someone has a garden of maize, do you know that some people are selling their gardens uh, at, at, at flowering level? You, you understand? So when you're talking about Kenya exporting, uh, by the time someone harvests the maize, someone has already bought it. So they, they, they sell everything, and they will not have even food left for the children, or even themselves. And many people are now feeding on maize. But we have just had a very serious heat wave Many gardens failed. So this is what we want to tell Ugandans that, and, and this is not an alarm, we are not being alarmists, and we are not lecturing government. You see, sometimes the people in government feel offended when we speak about some of these things. We are not lecturing you on what you should do, but we are talking about factual issues that concern you and everyone else. So many Ugandans in your own homes be on your alert. Because it is coming. One of the things that we need to do, and urgently, we need to address food waste. We need to address um, uh, overbuying. You know, some people who have some money go and buy unnecessarily, and unnecessarily, even what they don't need. So for me, I'm speaking to everyone who is listening and everyone who cares that the months of August, September, November might be chaotic to everyone, regardless of what is happening in Kawamoja. Because now the seed that we have now preserved as food which our people are eating is going to be planted if we get early rains in, 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 in August. Then prepare for starvation from those months till when we get another harvest. That is if we do not get a problem, pr problematic rains. So I want to speak to everyone. And this one again comes back to a failure in the system Uganda does not have a known food system. So doesn't the Ministry of Agriculture then have responsibility to take care of anything that is related? Uh -huh. Man, many, many institutions in Uganda have, I don't want to call them challenges, but I think, for, I, it, I, I think they, they are challenged. Let me give you just one example. We are eating and feeding from chemicalized vegetables, fruits, our food environments are full of chemicals. Whether you're a member of parliament, whether you're a minister, you are eating these chemicals because whether you like it or not, we are buying in the same market. For the people who export food, we always have rejects. And where do those rejects go? They come back to even the market here. Now, who regulates the food that goes into the market? Recently, we had a report from Makere, the university, indicating that 89% of the food in the main markets in Kampala is full of chemicals. It is contaminated. Pick the tomatoes. You'll find them with, you know, chemicals, even visible. But we have even been misled to think that when you wash the tomato with plain water, with plain water yeah. or you know, warm water, then it is okay, you can eat. I think we need to go back to the basics. Who regulates all this? I was speaking with some of the ministry people. Where are the inspectors? Do we have the inspectors? Okay. No, we don't have them. So we need to make sure that we go back to the basics. For me, I don't think that we must continuously handle this as a crisis. You, today you give me food, I'll eat it, finish it. Then tomorrow I'll beg again. Let us just have a food system in this country right. which addresses the government must be able to foresee, to forecast such that we have a plan that helps us to get enough food. And what is your organization doing about food rights and security in Uganda today? One of the things is here, we have continuously engaged government to make sure and, and also issuing these uh, uh, alerts. We have even by the way gone to court 
to challenge this and we are continuously running out of options if government on the floor of parliament has been advi advised to have strategic food reserves and they have refused maybe the request should be going back to the courts of law to make sure that they they order now government that it is now by a court order that you must have these strategic food reserves in the country we don't believe in many people have even asked us in covid 19 we did a lot of food support but i don't believe it in any in, in, in going forward because when you collect food it there is a possibility of collecting contaminated food you remember the food which government supplied to people during COVID-19? Yes. Uganda National Bureau of Sta uh, Standards came up and said 38% of the food which was given to people was contaminated. Now, we wanted the office of the Prime Minister to give us guidelines. The people who are taking food to Garamoja, are we not killing those people? Okay. All right, well, this is definitely a long conversation, mm. and hopefully we can continuously have this conversation yes. over the span of the next four mm. months, as you've stated. Mm. According to the climate changes, you get to see the heavy rains coming in in August, but then you are also expecting to see lots of food crises coming through between August and November, as stated by David Kavanda. Now, in that regard, it raises the eyebrow of, one, what's the state of food security mm. in Uganda, but also food literacy in this country and he has also mentioned the fact that you're taking in foods that actually are chemically not good already and then that contributes to the state of health for the entire country but also the malnutrition that is on a high rise right now i think one of the issues is because people are trying to survive through the economic crisis generally mm -hmm. and so they end up having to cut down on how much they're taking and the quality of what they're taking to be able to survive for the next day the next week the next month and complete the year 2022 however it's coming at an expense that now you're having children that are looking ill children that are malnourished and that's not good now for our friends uh, in Karamoja while we do have the government responding to it as a crisis I think the plea to for me to uh, government would be let's have that consideration of the national food reserve it will go a long way to continuously deal with this issue because it's not the first time we're having this Karamoja conversation in terms of food crisis it's not going to be the last time therefore there should be a constant deliberate national consideration of it every single year now away from that we started on a good note and it's a good chapter gay day Therefore, we're going to end morning at NTV on a chapter gay day. And I'll ask David, mm. uh, yeah. Joshua chapter gay's win, uh, uh, um, Joshua's win, what does that mean to you? We have gold and, and, and everything that is golden is good. Yeah. I think we can use some of these wonderful occurrences as uh, these must be our ambassadors in, in everything. They must be, you know, now working as uh, to, to give us some hope. I, I think that there is something good in it. Yes, we are talking about these many failing and things and challenges, but you see, we are very happy and proud that at least we have a gold yeah. at international level. Okay, yes. all right. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> uh, one of the books in the Bible written by Paul, and I quote, I have run a good rest. I have finished my rest. The question is, have you run your rest? Joshua Sheptege has also run his 10,000 meters and he has completed them and he has earned himself a gold. Now, the onus is on you to actually pick up on your own rest, be it financially, be it family-wise, be, be it business, be it whatever thing that you are engaged in right now. Pick up your rest, run it, and you will win a gold at the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the year, and whatever reward as and when it comes through your way. From Morning at NTV, thank you so much for having joined us for Monday's edition. Until we meet tomorrow, 6.30 a.m., have a blessed day.